Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. And today I'm super excited to have the Nikon Z5 with me. And in this video I'm gonna share some of my impressions on this camera. But first a disclaimer, this camera is not mine. This belongs to my very good friend Robin Wong. And he was so kind to let me borrow this camera and a couple of lenses. And just in case you don't know who Robin is, I'll put the link for his channel down below in the description. Please check it out. I was super, super excited to try out this Nikon Z5 because I have a soft spot for Nikon cameras. But I have not been using, uh, properly using a Nik any Nikon camera for a long time. And by that I mean for more than 10 years, for various reasons. And it was so good to sort of be back to Nikon at least uh, for a short while. And I have to say that this Z5 has been a really, really super positive surprise to me. Especially when you consider that this is Nikon's entry-level full-frame camera. I'm so happy to see that the good old Nikon ergonomics are still there. This camera reminds me a lot of my Nikon D800, which was the last Nikon camera that I owned and a camera that I used for many, many commercial assignments too. The menu structure looks familiar right away. And same goes for the ergonomics, even though this is not, of course, identical to the D800. But it was still quite easy for me to start using this camera, at least for basic photography. There are some things that I had to sort of relearn, like some of the things regarding the autofocus settings and things like that, because this is so much more advanced than the D800 that I used back in the day. Let me now share some of the things that I like and dislike in this Nikon Z5 camera. I'm gonna start with the dislikes so I can end this video with the positive feelings. The first dislike is the autofocus uh, face detection and tracking. They only work with the wide area autofocus and there is no way to quickly turn off the face detection. You have to go into the menu and it's kind of uh, tedious and uh, time consuming to do that if you want to do that quickly. There's no way, at least any way I know of, to program that on any other buttons or in the quick menu. Also the tracking is a little bit uh, frustrating uh, at times because my regular camera is the Sony a7 IV and on that camera I have the tracking on all the time. And on the Sony it's very reliable and easy to use. However, <laughs> with this camera, every time I want to um, engage the tracking I have to press the OK button. And even if the camera goes to sleep and then I wake up the camera, the tracking is not active anymore, I have to press the OK button again. And that is a little bit uh, frustrating. I'd like to be able to turn on the tracking continuously so that every time I turn the camera, it would have the tracking on so I could track any subject I want to right away without hitting the OK button every time. The next dislike is the level gauge, which is this huge ornament in the middle of the screen or the viewfinder. And I have to wonder whoever at Nikon came up with this crazy idea to put this huge distracting thing in the middle of the viewfinder. And most of the time, or all the time actually, I had to turn it off because I wanted to see what I'm shooting. I like to have the level gauge on because I have a tendency to uh, tilt my camera <laughs> unintentionally and it's very useful uh, feature to have on all the time so I can have my horizon line level if I want to. But on this camera it's impossible to use it because it's super super extra ultra distracting. The next dislike are the video features which are pretty lame and they were pretty lame even when this camera came out was it in 2020 and I would not recommend this camera for any video creators, video shooters. I would only recommend this camera for photographers but I guess Nikon had to sort of skimp on something to make the price what it is. This is actually 
quite inexpensive for a full frame camera. Those were my dislikes and now let's move on to the likes because there are many more of those. And the first one is the autofocus speed and reliability. I've been only shooting on this Nikon 40mm f2 and this is hardly the fastest focusing Nikon lens. But even on this lens I have absolutely nothing to complain about the autofocus speed and reliability. It's been super super good. I'd say it's not quite up to uh, the Sony standards but still very very good. Nothing to complain about that. The next like is the in-body stabilizer. Yes, this camera has a 5-axis in-body stabilizer, which is almost incredible considering this is the entry-level Nikon full-frame camera and considering the price point too. And that's not all. The stabilizer is very, very effective too. Probably not as effective as, say, Panasonic or Olympus in-body stabilizer, but certainly way better than the stabilizer in my Sony A7 Mark IV. And the next like is the viewfinder, which even by today's standards is not bad. High resolution, big enough to see properly if your pictures are in focus and uh, to compose your shots properly. Very nice viewfinder indeed. And the next like is the image quality. 24 megapixels full frame sensor. Not the latest BSI technology, but still the image quality is really, really good. And no complaints there. Plenty of detail, plenty of dynamic range and uh, plenty of high ISO performance too. And because the IBIS is so effective, you don't have to crank up the ISO uh, if you can uh, shoot at uh, slower shutter speeds, you are not trying to stop motion in a low light environment. Then you can easily shoot at very low ISOs and keep the, uh, keep the premium image quality. But even if you have to crank up the ISO, there's no problem. This camera can take it. And the next like is dual card slots, which is, I think, almost unique on a full frame camera at this price point. Very well done. You can have a in-camera backup or you can, if you happen to shoot video on this camera, you can shoot the video on a different card and uh, your stills on a different card. Or you can shoot your JPEGs on one card. There are ants here. I think they are biting my ankles. Anyway, then you can shoot uh, your JPEGs on one card and your RAWs on one card or whatever combination you want to choose. Um, two card slots is never a bad thing. The next like is the tilt screen. And I could not almost believe how good it felt to use a tilt screen again. Because all my current cameras, my Sony cameras and my Ricoh cameras, they either have a, a, a flip out screen or a fixed screen and the flip out screen is very nice for video, but for photography, a tilt screen is so good. It makes, it makes it a joy to use this camera or any camera with a tilt screen for photography. The next like is the weather ceiling, which also is, I think, almost unique for an entry level full frame camera at this price point. I believe the price, new price for this camera is around 1400 US dollars or something something like that. And the weather ceiling is never a bad thing either. Although I have to be a little bit disappointed uh, because Robin bought this camera used and look at these rubber flaps. They are all swollen out, out of shape. And obviously this specific camera is not weather sealed anymore. And um, it makes me wonder about the quality of these rubber flaps here uh, covering the contacts and if any rubber part of any camera should come loose or swollen out of shape it should be the the grip the rubber covering the rip, uh, rip uh, grip because that's the part that you are squeezing and uh, handling and uh, touching every time you use the camera but I don't think anyone is going to open and close these flaps like 200 times a day. And then I'd like to say a few words about this excellent 40mm f2 lens. 
This is an interesting lens. It has a plastic mount, but other than that, it doesn't feel like a cheapo plastic lens. It weighs in at about 170 grams, almost the same as my Sony 40mm f2.5 lens, which is a premium quality lens compared to this. I mean, it has uh, so many other features, two linear autofocus motors and everything, and it's not even fair to compare these two lenses. But interestingly, this is not any lighter than that lens. And by the way, yes, this is the special edition lens. This looks like um, the classic uh, Nikon F uh, film camera lens with the silver ring. There is no aperture ring, unfortunately. I wish Nikon still used aperture ring also, but they have decided not to use that anymore, which is a shame. The optical quality is simply fantastic, especially when you consider the price, which is, I think, less than 300 US dollars. The f2 maximum aperture is really good in low light or really good for some shallow depth of field whenever necessary. This is not, of course, perfect, but when you consider the relatively low price, I think this is a fantastic little lens. The reason I have a soft spot for Nikon cameras is that in the past I have used so many different Nikon cameras for my commercial work. And back in 1983, when I had my very first paid commercial assignment, I used a Nikon camera. My camera back then was the FM2. That's a long time ago and that was of course a film camera, not a digital camera. There were no digital cameras back then. I think even today the Nikon Z5 has to be the best value full frame camera for photography. And there's another upside too. Nikon has decided to allow third party manufacturers to make autofocus lenses for their Z mount. Tamron just released their very excellent 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8 g2 standard zoom lens for the z mount and there are so many viltrox uh, options available also prime lenses for a very good price so you don't have to lay down obscene amount of money to build a very decent uh, full frame kit around this nikon z5 camera body it's been a true pleasure to shoot on this nikon z5 camera and I was honestly surprised how many good memories this Nikon camera brought back, even though this was my very first proper experience with a Nikon mirrorless camera. I think Nikon has done a really good job lately with their cameras and uh, I hope I can shoot more on Nikon cameras in the future. If you liked this little Nikon Z5 impressions video, please do consider buying me a cup of coffee. There's a link down below for that if you don't live in Finland. Thanks so much and I'll definitely see you soon in the next video.